Hello and welcome to the session. In this session, we will discuss a problem on Naveway's algorithm for continuous attribute. So please refer the Naveway's algorithm problem for discrete attribute uh, in the previous uh, lecture. The link is given in the description box. So Naveway's algorithm, suppose you have some continuous attributes in your training data set. So then in that case, there are two ways that we can uh, predict using the Naveway's algorithm. Uh, the first method is you can discretize your continuous values. That means you can change your continuous values to discrete values. Or the second technique is you apply the normal or the Gaussian distribution for continuous feature. So in this session we will be using the second method that will be using uh, normal or Gaussian distribution for the continuous feature. So in the Gaussian Naveway's algorithm, so that's why since we are using Gaussian distribution for uh, the continuous attribute, we call it as Gaussian Naveway's algorithm. So in the Gaussian Naveway's algorithm, the values of the continuous features are assumed to be sampled from a Gaussian distribution. So let's look at the problem. So this is a student's, this is a training data set, right, to assess the student's performance. We need to apply the Naveway's algorithm for the continuous attribute. So from the table, it's uh, obvious that CGPA is having a continuous attribute. So the last session uh, where we apply Naveway's, the difference was we had taken a similar training data set but it was discrete. The values of CGPA were we just had three possible values greater than 9, greater than equal to 9, greater than equal to 8, less than 8. So we just had discrete values. In this case in this example, we are seeing that we have different continuous values for CGPA like 9.5, 8.2, 9.3, 7.6. So you have a range of continuous values. So we need to, uh, so this is a training data set which is given. Upon this, we have to apply the Naveway's algorithm. A test data will be given. And for the test data, you need to predict for the test data, the job offer would be classified as yes or no. So let's begin. So this is the input uh, table or the training data set for the continuous attribute. The first step remains the same like in the uh, any other Naveway's algorithm. Let it be discrete or continuous. The first step remains the same. We need to compute the prior probability for the target feature job, job offer. The target is job offer. That is yes or no. So the prior c probabilities of both the classes, that is yes or no, are calculated using the table. So refer this table. So what we are doing, how do you calculate the prior probability is write down the job offer classes as the first column, yes or no, are the two values. The second column would be number of instances. So number of yes, is, yes here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So number of instances the job offer is yes is 7 and number of instances the job offer no is 3. So what is the probability value? So probability that job offer yes is, is yes is equal to 7 by 10 where 10 is the total number of uh, instances that we have and probability of job offer no is 3 by 10. Now step 2 is compute the frequency matrix and likelihood probability. The, the steps will remain the same for NABIS. The first step would be computing prior probability. The second step would be computing frequency matrix and likelihood probability. The step remains the same. But the difference is since now I am applying uh, the we are trying to find the frequency matrix and likelihood probability for each feature. Let's first find for ZGPA. Now the difference comes here. Right, compared to the previous problem, now the CGPA is a continuous value. So we are using, we are finding the likelihood probability for this continuous attribute that is CGPA using the Gaussian normal distribution. So the Gaussian distribution to calculate the likelihood probability, this is the formula. Okay, so let's see the formula in detail. So the Gaussian distribution for the continuous feature is calculated using this formula probability of xi is equal to xk where xi in this case is CGPA and small xk is basically the value of the CGPA that is 9.5, 8.2, 7.3 the different values that it had. Uh, given that it belongs to the class CJ, right? So the class in this case is yes or no. So CJ, so let's say probability that CGPA is equal to 8.2 given that the class is yes. So basically that's what it means. So XI, the capital XI is nothing but the ith continuous attribute in the given data set and XK is a value. So let's say XI is CGPA and small XI is a value 8.2. If I take interactiveness, then XI is interactiveness, small XK is the value for that interactiveness. 
CJ is a Jth class of that feature. So in this case, the class is yes or no. Now that would be a Gaussian value, a Gaussian function of three different values. Small xk, basically the value of the uh, attribute. Mu ij is basically the mean. You need to find the mean of the values of this continuous attribute xi. So we are going to find the mean of the continuous attribute xi, that is mean of CGPA, I'm going to find, that would be one value. Sigma, which is nothing but a standard deviation. So basically, uh, we have to find mean and standard deviation. So this is the formula for the Gaussian distribution. So Gaussian distribution for the continuous attribute is probability that of, the cl uh, of xi is equal to xk, given that it belongs to class CJ is 1 by standard deviation into root of 2 pi into e power of xk which is nothing but the value of the attribute minus mu ij which is nothing but the mean the whole square divided by 2 sigma square where sigma is again the standard deviation. So this is a formula. Now let's apply this formula to find the uh, likelihood probability for CGPA. So let's consider the feature CGPA now. So in this example we can see that CGPA is a continuous attribute. So we need to find the likelihood probability for CGPA. So how do you find? So for uh, based upon the previous equation, capital X by, as I said, is equal to CGPA, which is the attribute, and CJ is the class. Now let me find the uh, uh, likelihood probability for the job offer is equal to yes. So we need to find mean and standard deviation first, right? In order to apply the Gaussian distribution formula, first I need to find mean and standard deviation. Let's do it for the class job offer is equal to yes. So let's find the mu, mu i for where mu ij, where ij is nothing but CGPA s. So what is find the mean for the CGPA where the job offer is yes. And again find the standard deviation for the CGPA when the job offer is yes. Now how do you find the m m mean value? Just sum up all the values of CGPA and divide it by 7. See here it is 9.5 plus wherever you have CGPA, yes. Just sum it up and divide it by the number of instances. So in this case 9.5 plus 8.2 plus 8.4 plus 9.1 plus 9.6 plus 8.6 plus 8.3 divided by number of instances. The number of instances of S is 7. So here there should be divide by 7. So sum up everything, divide by 7, then I am getting the mu value as 8.814286. So this is the mean value for the CGPA S. Now find the standard deviation. The standard deviation for CGPA S is what? The standard deviation is what? It is, what is the standard deviation formula? The value of the attribute minus the mean whole square divided by n minus 1. That's the standard deviation formula. We have discussed all these concepts many times. Standard deviation is root of xi minus mu whole square divided by n minus 1. So that is nothing but the numerator is xi minus mu. What is xi? xi are these values, right? So minus the mean. So let's take the fun, first one. 9.5 minus mean is 8.1, 8.814286 whole square plus 8.2 minus the mean value whole square plus 8.4 minus 8.814286 whole square. So basically like that you repeat for all. So I am subtracting xi, the values of CGPA where the job offer is yes, minus the mean value the whole square. So the numerator is calculated as 2.0283, substitute that here, substitute 2.0283 here, divided by 7 minus 1, why 7? 7 is the number of job offers which is yes, right, in this case. So I am getting the value of standard deviation as 0 0.58146. So this is the standard deviation and mean formula for the CGPA where the job offer is yes. Now repeat this again for job offer no. So again, what is the mean value? The calculations I have not shown. How do you calculate mean? Just sum up all the CGPAs where the job offer is no. So 9.3 plus 7.6 plus 7.4 divided by 3. I should get 8.1333. And how is the standard deviation calculated? Just subtract the CGPA with the mean value. 9.3 minus 8.1333 whole square plus 
uh, this one 7.6 minus 8.1333 whole square plus 7.5 minus 8.133 whole square divided by 3 minus 1 square root. So just apply this formula again. Okay, so then I get the standard deviation for no as this much. So now next step what we have to do is once mean and standard deviation is computed now let's find the likelihood probability for any test value using the Gaussian distribution formula. So the test value should be given in the question the test data should be given. So before that let's complete the other uh, attribute as well we have an other attribute in the question interactiveness. Now interactiveness values were only yes and no it's a discrete feature. So you have to find frequency matrix and likelihood probability using the earlier method method which I've done in the last video. So frequency matrix for interactiveness is how many times you had interactiveness as yes right uh, and job offer was yes when interactiveness is yes job offer is yes five instances when interactiveness is yes job offer is no there is one instance similarly do for no interactiveness is no but still you got the job offer it is two similarly then find out the total then how do you find the likelihood probability we have done this in the last session please refer probability uh, that interactiveness is yes and you got a job offer is 5 divided by 7. Probability that interactiveness is yes but still you didn't get the job offer so that is 1, 1 divided by 3. Probability that interactiveness is no but you got the job offer so that is 2 by 7. Probability that interactiveness is no but you didn't get the job offer that is 2 by 3. So this is a frequency matrix and likelihood probability for interactiveness. I have this is a discrete feature. So that's a you don't have to use Gaussian distribution here. So now for both the attributes we have found the likelihood probability. Now step 3 is use the Bayes theorem to calculate the probability of all the hypothesis. So they have to give us the test data in the question. Suppose in the question they have given the test data is CGPA if the CGPA is 8.5 if the interactiveness is yes find whether the student will get the job offer or not. So this is a question. So how do you do it? Now you have to do this for both the hypothesis. Let's do further hypothesis job offer is yes. So when the job offer is yes, how do you write probability that job offer is yes for the given test data it is equal to probability of CGPA this is the test data right probability CGPA is 8.5 and you get the job offer into probability that interactiveness is yes and you get the job offer into probability that job offer is yes. Now we already we have to first compute this right the first parameter. How do you find the first parameter? I have already found the mean value and standard deviation for yes. So take this equation this is a Gaussian distribution equation which I said in the beginning of the session right 1 by standard deviation into root of 2 pi into e power of xk minus mu whole square by 2 sigma square. So what do you have to do standard deviation you take for CGPA s I just computed in the beginning of the session Com put that multiply that 2 pi take the inverse multiply by e to the power of xk what is xk here that is a test data the test data CGPA is 8.5 substitute that here minus substitute with the me, mean of CGPA which is S I just computed in the previous slide divided by 2 or sig sigma or CGPA S is again the standard deviation right see like this you substitute all the values mu of CGPA S we calculated as 8.814 mu uh, standard deviation of CGPA S we have computed as 0 0.581 just substitute I am getting the probability that right for this test data to get the job offer is equal to s is 0 0.594 okay now let's calculate the second parameter what is the probability of interactiveness is equal to yes given the job offer yes so how do you find the second one the second one I've done here so probability that interactiveness is yes and job offer is yes we just did it in the previous slide it is here right probability that interactiveness is yes and job offer is yes is 5 by 7 that's all so just put that 5 by 7 and what is the probability of job offer the third parameter probability that job offer is yes is 7 by 10 right so because there were seven instances of yes and the total training test set, data set was 10 now just substitute all the values the first value is 0 0.594 the second one is 5.7 multiply all this 0 0.594 into 5 by 7 divided by into 7 by 10 so I am getting the probability 
for this today's data to get the job as 0 0.297. Now let's repeat this entire step for the job offer as no. Repeat this entire step for job offer as no. So for similarly for the hypothesis job offer no, this is how the formula changes. Wherever you had yes, now put there no. Okay, but the test data will remain the same. So now I need to find the probability that for the CGPA 8.5 the job offer is no. So again use the same Gaussian distribution formula. The only difference is now standard deviation for CGPA no which I just computed in the beginning of this problem. You put that here. Mu value for CGPA no you put that here. But the test data will remain the same. So after substituting you get the probability as 0.369. Now the second parameter, probability that interactiveness is yes, but job offer is no. You come back to the interactiveness table which I just had here. Interactiveness is yes, but job offer is no is 1 by 3. So put 1 by 3 here. Okay, so 1 by 3. The second uh, parameter is 1 by 3. Probability that job offer is no is, how many job offers no? 3. So 3 divided by 10. So multiply that 0 0.369 into 0 uh, into 1 by 3 that is the interactiveness is yes job offer is no and probability of job offer no is 3 by 10. So 0 0.369 into 1 by 3 into 3 by 10 I am getting the value as 0 0.0369. Now you need to compare both of this right. So that is comparison I will do in the step 4 where I use the maximum a posterior hypothesis to classify whether the test object uh, to classify the test object to the hypothesis with the highest probability. So what did we see that probability that job offer is yes for the given test data it has a highest probability we saw that for job offer no I got the value as 0 0.0369 for job offer s yes, I got the value as 0 0.297 so obviously this is more right so that means the test data according to the test data the student is going to get the job right so probability that job offer is yes it has the highest probability of 0 0.297 therefore the test data is classified as job offer is equal to yes so this is the answer okay thank you so much any doubt please let me know and before this problem please refer to the previous session on Navebase based algorithm for discrete values so that would be a clear you'll get a clear idea of doing how you can find Navebase based algorithms uh, for both discrete values as well as continuous values thank you so much